Hey folks, how's it going guys? We're going to start off. Let's do chapter 10. I'm going to try to share the screen. We're recording. Hope y'all are seeing all that. There we go. Let me start it up before we do this. Y'all see that now? Y'all should be able to see that. Right, can y'all see that okay? All right, let's go. Let's see if this is going to work. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Now we're working on them. Okay, so this is chapter 10 on uh, meiosis and sexual reproduction. We're going to try to do it real quick here before we go down to class and go over chapter 10. It's one of my favorite chapters in the book because we're looking at the concept of meiosis. Okay, so meiosis is a another type of nuclear division where we're going to cut the chromosome numbers in half. In this process, we'll see over 70 trillion combinations that one individual uh, from the mating of two individuals we could create. So it's pre pretty fascinating here, okay? All right, so in meiosis, we're going to see nuclear division like mitosis where you're going to have a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But in this one, we're going to have a double division, okay? So a lot of times when we say meiosis, we're talking about sexual reproduction. Remember that all of our cells are diploid, right? That means we have two, there are 20, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We get one of each pair from mom, one of each pair from dad, and we come together and form the diploid organism, okay? So what we're gonna do in this is we're gonna do a double division where we're gonna produce haploid gametes, which will be sperm and egg, okay? So gametes then will fuse together uh, to form the zygote after every production, right? Okay, when we, when we have uh, the, the fertilization occurs, okay? Now, so here is a karyotype showing all the chromosomes of the human, okay? And so we have, there are 23 pairs. Notice that they're in order of size, pair one all the way down to 22. And then this 23rd pair are the sex pairs. Now this one has two X's, so this would have been a little girl, right? And so you can see here in this one, they have, I guess we have dad chromosome blue and mother's red, but actually they're, they're not exactly that color, okay? Kind of interesting there, okay? Now, Homologous chromosomes are these pairs then. So there's your, there's your pairs of homologous chromosomes. They're going to be identical in the sense that they contain the same gene. So in other words, all these different genes for different traits will be the same on homologous pairs. The difference is, is that mom and dad will have different variations of those genes. For example, uh, dad could be black, brown hair, mother could be redhead. So that would be different alleles. So alleles are various forms of a gene. Okay, and that's pretty cool. Okay, now. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's our two divisions. I love this overview. We'll hit it kind of quick. We're gonna see a meiosis one where the chromosome number is, is gonna be cut from diploid to haploid, okay? And we're gonna see a prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. And then we're gonna turn around and do it again in meiosis two. And we'll have a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase two. But in that one, actually meiosis two is a lot like uh, mitosis, as we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna, blow, I'm gonna fly through the pictures. So here is a particular organism, a nada, that may not exist, that has four chromosomes total. Notice you have the two, the one and two from dad, which are blue, and the one and two from mom, which are red. Okay, so in meiosis one, they pair up, the homologous pairs come together, okay? And then they will actually uh, do, do some what's called crossing over, and we'll talk about that in a minute when they exchange pieces. And then we're going to divide those cells so that each cell, the baby cell, will get one of the pair. So each pair then divides up and goes, you know, each cell gets, each cell gets one, one, and one, two. Now this is random assortment, so it's random. Okay, so there are four ways that can divide out, okay, with the, with the nine, okay? And then in meiosis two, we're going to separate the sister chromatids so that each cell will get one copy of that haploid number, okay? You see that? Now, I make a joke in a lecture and I talk about this. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom, we used to go to Memphis. I had an uncle that lived in Memphis. And we would actually go out to the airport and sit and watch the planes stay off and leave. And that was a big event for somebody in, in rural Mississippi to go to Memphis and see these planes. Today, I think that's where you get drugs or other illegal things now. But I do have friends that still go out and watch FedEx take off and leave or eight and nine. It's pretty amazing. And so my mother would always say, if you don't do your job, Rob, if you don't clean your, clean your room, eat your food, and we're up on the farm, then we're going to take you up to Memphis, get on a plane, and take you to Russia where there's an identical little robin sitting out there somewhere that, that, that lives in, in a really cold part of Russia, and he, he's identically copied of you. He has uh, one room he lives in with one potato a day, but he's fat like you. I don't I never follow that. I just fat like me, but he ate one potato, 
and he had one toy that was like a little a little like a little wagon that had three wheels so he had a really bad life and we're going to swap you for him and bring that kid back here and he will appreciate all the great things we do for him but when i get to college and see what i'm fixing to show you i realized my mother just lied it was ball face liar okay and so I'm gonna prove this through three things that happen here that ensure that there is no little Robin anywhere else on earth. There is no little you anywhere else on earth unless you have an identical twin. And they are two exact clones because they are created when the sperm and egg come together in that first division where you have complete genetic copies, each of that grows into an individual. So identical twins come from the same sperm and egg, okay? But what we're gonna see through this is there is no little Robin anywhere else on earth. And there are three factors here. One of them is called crossing over, and that is during prophase one, when those homologous pairs come together and they swap apples for apples, oranges for oranges, and that's pretty cool. And then that mathematical thing that in that, in that anaphase one, each cell, at the end of meiosis one, each cell, the two cells forming, are gonna get 23 of each of those chromosomes, right, and it's random assortment, okay? And then the third one that he alludes to here with that big number is, okay, that's fine, okay, I can make 4,808,000 different sperm or egg, but what happens, don't it take two to tango to make a baby? So then you have this huge number of 70 trillion possible people that can be formed by one male and female. Maybe Adam and Eve could have seven trillion descendants, and, now, and, and it, none of them are identically the same. Okay? So we shall go through that. So crossing over real quick, take a look back at our PowerPoint, where we swap these homologous chromosomes. So here we go. You can see these, these two homologous chromosomes come together, and we end up swapping some of this red for the blue, so they actually swap apples for oranges. And so think about this. Let's say I'm ugly, and I always use this by example. I'm short, fat, and ugly, and talk too much. All of my children are going to get short, fat, and ugly, right, if we didn't have crossing over. But instead, maybe I get crossover. My mother is short, fat, and ugly, but my dad is, you know, tall, thin, and good looking, uh, but doesn't say a whole lot. Then maybe we swap some of that out so we could get a new combination. That's what crossing over does. It allows us to have new combinations that never existed. So my, maybe my children's sperm would be tall, cute, and good looking, and talks not too much. That ain't happening, right? But anyway, you see what I'm saying? There's all these combinations that can occur, okay? So crossing over there is swapping apples for apples, oranges for oranges. Okay, then an in independent assortment, look at this. In our NADA, there are eight different ways you can put three at a time. Then now we're going to, now they switch gears and decided. They had three chromosomes, right? So that would be two to the third pair. Two to the th yeah, yes, two to, the, two to the third power, okay? All right, now, look at this. So basically, if you have two to the 23rd pair, you get 4,808,608 combinations. But when you square that, because it takes two to tango, that would be a couple, then that would be 70 trillion. If you had one crossing over, that's just looking at random uh, alignment. If you get one crossing over in that, then you get, 4951, that's that Chichillion. I don't know what that is. That's out, way out, out there. But that shows you how many possible it is. And we have at least several crossing overs every time we make sperm or egg. So that number then exceeds uh, 4 to the 23rd power squared. Fascinating, amazing math that, that, that God did here for this. Okay? So there it is. So 2 to the 23rd power is 8,308,608. That's how many sperm or egg you can make. But when we square that, and actually that number it is actually. Uh, was it doing there? So sexual and humans 23 pairs chromosome, the possible chromosome combinations is two to the 33rd power because there's 33 chromosomes, right? Okay, or right, because we had 32, okay, or eight men assuming no crossing over curves. That's kind of weird. So that was another one, a strange one there. So genetic variation is really crazy. That would be if, if you did, and uh, look at that again, sexual combination of the population. Assuming no crossing over. Okay, asexual reproduction, nothing much there. Okay, uh, and then they're just gonna walk through it again. They get way too much on this, and I want you to know. They walk through each of the stages again. I actually like the picture of it. Here is a lizard that self fertilizes itself, right? So it is a female lizard that doesn't do sexual reproduction. That's pretty wild. Okay, and then phase two. Here it is. I was trying to get to the pictures here, showing all that. So prophase one, look at that, there's crossing over. Then they line up, independent assortment, right? Bam, right? And then in meiosis two, right? We've got it, we, basically it's just mitosis. We separate citrochromatids through our different stages. Okay, pretty cool there. So pretty much the same old thing here, nothing much to it. I'm trying to fly through it here. Here's comparisons between meiosis and mitosis. Mitosis is repair, you know, and asexual reproduction. 
meiosis creates these new combinations because of crossing over and random alignment at metaphase one. Pretty wild. Okay, and similarities, we've got more tables here. I'm just gonna kind of walk through this. I'm gonna read out to you, see if I see anything interesting. She goes over it again, visually, loves this stuff. Okay, uh, this is kind of cool. The haploids are called gametophytes, and the diploid or individual, like the diploid structure of the adult human would be the sporophyte. Same with the pine trees, called it sporophyte. The diploid structure, okay? And then we're gonna do spermatogenesis to make sperm and oogenesis to make eggs. And we get this life cycle of the humans when it fertilizes the egg and sperm on a zygote, then that zygote grows into a, an adult, okay? All right, now check this out. During spermatogenesis, here we got love this life cycle. So the egg and sperm are made by meiosis. They come together, and then you grow into an adult, to a child and to adult over time. So the circle of life continues on. Pretty cool. Notice that in spermatogenesis and the testes that we get an equal division of cytoplasm, so you end up with four sperm. But in the female, oogenesis, you get an uneven cytokinesis where one cell gets all the cytoplasm and the other little cell forms what's called a polar body, okay? And you can see it, the first polar body is formed here. And then the second nuclear division doesn't occur until the sperm is trying to fertilize the egg and you make a second polar body and you get this huge fertilized egg that is considerably, the way that picture doesn't do it justice, it's five or 600 times bigger than the sperm because you had an unequal cytokinesis. Polar bodies can be found in women, and that proves that they're female, right, uh, genetically wise. Okay? Now, some other weird things that happen out there in nature. Check it out. Uh, Euploidy means to have the correct chromosome number. Anaploidy means you have an un, an, a, a chromosome, irregular, uh, wrong chromosome number. And this happens when you're doing the uh, separation of the chromosomes at meiosis 1, anaphase, and at meiosis 2, anaphase 2. And if, the, and if one of the chromosomes don't pull apart, or such chromatids don't pull apart, you have what's called a non-disjunction or failure of the chromosome to separate. And that can lead to a sperm or egg having trisomy, which would be one extra chromosome, or instead of 23 for us, 24, or a monosomy where one of the chromosomes are missing. Okay, and look what I'm talking about here. So if meiosis one occurs, uh, non-disjunction, then all the cells on the left will have, uh, here would have an extra trisomy, and these would have monosomies, right? Here we get a normal division in meiosis one, so you have two normal sperm or egg, but a non-disjunction here leads to a monosomy and a, a trisomy here and a monosomy here, and they're gonna divide it on out, there we go. You can see, so this one has an extra chromosome, this is missing one, these two over here have an extra chromosome, and these are missing one. So these are pretty cool, non example of non-disjunction, okay? All right, so, okay, now, a couple of famous diseases of some of this. Probably the most famous one is Down syndrome, right? We have 321s, short stature, eyelid fold, flat face, stubborn fingers, wide gap between first and second toe. Uh, here is a carry graph of showing that, a trisomy with 321s. Uh, these people do have a gene, discard gene, that can cause some mental retardation sometimes, and they don't have, they have a lifespan maybe in the late 50s, they have some heart problems, okay? Uh, the older a woman is having her child, the more likely she is to have trisomy 21. And that is now thought to be due to her female body not, not seeing the error in the chromosomes of the baby, which would, and I'm sorry, 23, 20, having 24 is an error. And so a lot of times the female woman's body will have an abortion to, to, to prevent that error from making it all the way to uh, being born, okay? Uh, changes in chromosome. The other ones here, here's some other cool ones. XO is Turner syndrome. So when you have an error in the chromosome number, these are females that cannot have children. Okay, and they're the only living organisms that can live with 45, only humans that can live with 45 chromosomes. One of my more favorite ones is YO is it, is it never been born. So you cannot live with just a Y. So YO, 45 chromosomes, die, miscarriage, XO, Turner syndrome, live. And I've had, in my 30 years teaching here, I've had two young women that had this, identified that to me. Uh, one of them uh, found out at, at, at birth. The other one found out when she was like 18 or 19, never had a period, okay, pretty wild. Okay, Klinefelter's is multiple X's, and these are males with some breast development, right, and some other characteristics here, and it can have multiple X's. Uh, a deletion of the SRY gene, which is found on the Y chromosome, appears to cause maleness. So uh, I've got no problem with a guy making Adam first and then Eve, but I can tell you that the woman pathway is dominant. You can take a organism XY, take out that gene off the Y, and they develop into a female. Okay, so here we have the missing, uh, there's an X on the left, and then there's XXY on the right, Klein filters on the right. 
uh, other disorders where we can have deletions in chromosomes where pieces do not fall off during uh, crossing over or during uh, anaphase. Uh, and some other ones that's really bad is duplication. Sometimes you get a duplication of chromosomes and the most difficult ones, I think, are translocations when people's chromosome pieces break off and go to another chromosome, okay, during uh, uh, crossing over. Uh, inversions is pretty simple, okay. Some famous ones here. Uh, Allegheo syndrome is a translocation between uh, chromosome 2 and 20. Williams syndrome is a chromosome 7 deletion, with, which kept children with turned up nose, wide mouth, small chin, large ears. Uh, another one down there is chronic myeloid leukemia, a blood cancer caused by translocation of chromosome 22 to 9. So pretty rough. And you can see how these can occur. There's a deletion, duplication, translocation, inversions, right? Where pieces break off and get on there backwards. Uh, here's an example of deletion. These kids all have that one that we just talked about, the deletion disorder, uh, Williams syndrome, okay? And here's the blood of somebody with the chronic myeloid leukemia, okay? Caused by translocation. All right, that was kind of a quick run through on that chapter, uh, but still, we got a little bit done there. Uh, y'all have a great day, and we'll see y'all in class.